Hearts, it's Ricky from Ricky's Pretties, and today I've got a cute little project for you. We are going to be turning this into this. Um, and what is this, you might ask? This is a Christmas ornament. It's a rose, you say. Well, you know what? Hobby Lobby came out with these a couple of years ago, and I thought they were pretty, and I bought them. These are Christmas ornaments. Yes, they are roses. They're completely glitterified. They're very heavy. So when you, you know, clip them to the tree, first of all, the clip that they used, I don't know what you guys call these in uh, today's world, but back in the 70s, this was called a roach clip. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's just, that's just what they were called. And I don't know what they're called today, but that's what we called them back then. And so that's what I'm referring to it as now, because that's pretty much what it is to me. Um, but yeah, they drilled a hole in it or it came with a hole in it and they stuck this in here. Um, but the thing is, is that um, some of these that I bought, I bought a couple of years ago, this is starting to kind of rust out. Um, and some of the flowers have popped off of them. And this just doesn't hold to the branch very well. So, you know, I'm kind of tired of the way this looks. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to make my own. And so that's where the inspiration for this came from. And these are Dollar Tree flowers. And these are Dollar Tree clothes pins so um you can make a lot of these you know for not very much now there are some things that you'll probably have to get in order to accomplish this look but you know it's really not that expensive um i already have a lot of this stuff on hand because you know i like to do a variety of different things now i've also made a little tiny version of that this is a mulberry flower that i have put um, some glitter on and a little, you know, with the tiny clothespin. So I bought some tiny clothespins too, so I can show you guys that. And um, you're going to need some glitter, of course. I'm going to put all of the things that we're going to use, I'm going to talk about them as we're using them, and then I'm going to put a list of the things that um, we use in this project down in the description box below to save time on the video. Okay, so the first thing you're going to need is uh, is this little bunch of white roses from Dollar Tree. And uh, I'm just gonna clip one off here that we're gonna work with. And you're gonna need some mica powder. I got mine on Amazon. It came in this box, it's non-toxic. And it just washes off. If you don't like getting stuff on your hands, I recommend that you put gloves on because this is going to look like you've been bronzed by the time we get done with it. Um, people put this in resin, soaps, candles, bath bombs. So it's perfectly safe to get it on your skin. Um, slime. You can mix it in paint. You can mix it with water and spray it on things, which is what we're going to do today. And um, you can just... You can use this for, you can mix it in clay. There's all kinds of stuff that you can use with this. And this came with lots of colors, purple, green, orange. Uh, but today we are using, we've got, I'm using rose red, golden, and bronze. These are the colors. So if you get, if you get, don't get the same kind I have, just, you know, you can use similar colors. All right. And what I've done is I've just, I, I didn't measure, I just dumped some in here. And then I mixed it with just a little bit of water. And what we're gonna do first is, um, I recommend also having like a little vase or something to put your flower in so that it doesn't have to lay flat to dry. I didn't get one out, but I will be here in just a minute. So I'm gonna take the leaf off for now cause we'll mess with that in a minute. But right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray the flower with the pink. You want to mix it up really good. This does get everywhere. And we're going to let this dry in between coats, okay? And I'm just going to put one coat of this on. Kind of aim it towards the paper towel. And these are kind of silky flowers, so it's going to spot. That's perfectly fine. By the time it dries, you're not going to be able to see any of these spots. And if you do, it'll be, it'll just, trust me, it'll be fine. Okay, so it's pink. I don't know if you can see how pink it is, but that's what it's going to look like for now. And we're just going to let it dry. 
or get a little minute before we put another color on. Okay. And so I'll be back in just a few minutes. It won't take that long for this to dry and we'll be back. Okay. This is pretty well dry. So we've, we're going to switch colors to our gold. We're going to give that a good shake. I got these little plastic bottles at um, Dollar Tree. They're very handy. Um, they also have this kind with the lids on them so that you can keep your liquids. You will ha you do need to rinse your caps out though because this mica powder will clog them. So you've got to rinse your caps out after you use your mica powder. Otherwise you'll be buying more caps. Um, now we're just going to spray some of this gold on here. Just all around. Just kind of adding it to what we already have. And now we're going to let this dry. And we'll be back in just a minute. Because it won't take long. Okay, this is pretty well dry. It's got a few little wet spots on it, but I think it's fine. And, you know, if you have these little splotches, you can, you know, you can kind of smooth them out a little bit, but this is fine. This is going to look great. Okay. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to do our bronze. We're just going to shake that up make sure our lid's on good. And we're also going to spray our leaf. So I'm going to go ahead and do it first. Okay. And then we're just going to do our flower. And I just do a little bit of the bronze color. I don't like putting a whole lot on it because I don't want to take the pink away, you know, but I just want to kind of give it some depth. So that's perfect. And so I'm going to set this aside. We're going to let the leaves dry. We're going to let the flower dry. And then once your flower gets dry, what you're going to want to do now, um, because I'm not going to be able to, I'm not going to show this. Um, but what you're going to do next, after your leaf and your flower gets dry, you're going to go ahead and put your leaf back on the stem. And then you're going to take it outside. And this is where the little um, jar is helpful too. Like if you have a little vase to put your flower in. And what I do, guys, is, um, you know, when I'm working on these, when I'm doing like a whole bunch of these, like I have, I have a bunch made up over here. Um, like I'll do the whole... What I do when I'm making these is I leave them on here um, and or I'll cut the, you know, I'll leave them on here and I will spray one with the pink and then I'll just go around. I put, I'll put them in the little, you know, I'll hold it and I'll, I'll spray one with pink and then the next one is pink. And then by the time I get around to the last one, the first one's dry. And then I can start with my gold and then I can do my bronze. And then I just set it in the vase, let it all dry. And then I take it outside. So take it outside, put it in your little vase, take it outside, and then you're going to seal it because what's going to happen is the water is going to evaporate and your mica powder is going to be left on the flower. But when you do this, the mica powder can come off. It'll like little spores. It'll just go poof. So to keep that from happening, you want to seal it. And now I've got any sealer will work as long as it's clear. You don't want a color. You just want clear. This is a Krylon triple thick um, crystal clear glaze. This is what I have on hand. So this is what I used. You can use anything. It can be matte. It can be satin. It can be, uh, gloss finish, whatever you've got will be just fine. Um, but do use it outside, especially if it's not low odor, because this will asphyxiate you if you are using it indoors. Um, it is flammable also, so you don't want to use it near a flame. So I would recommend just taking it outside and spraying it down outside and it'll dry. You know, if it's warm where you live, like it is here, it'll dry in no time. If you just leave it outside for a little bit, just set it in a area where it doesn't get much wind so it doesn't blow away and you'll be great to go in probably about 30 minutes. And then you can bring it back inside when it's not so stinky. So that's what I'm going to do next. Um, I'm not going to put that on camera, but that's what I'm going to do next is when this gets all dry is I'll take it outside and I'll seal it. And then we'll be back inside to um, get the next step done. Okay. 
And you can see this gets on your hands. Like I said, it's going to get everywhere. This is this would be really pretty as a bronzer. This is probably what they put in bronzer, actually. <laughs> uh, but anyways, um, I'm going to go get cleaned up. I'll get this sprayed, and then we'll be back. Okay, you guys, our leaf is dry, our flower is dry, and we are ready to move on. Now, for the next step, you are going to need a cordless drill. If you don't already have one, I highly recommend that you get one. Like I've got glitter all over it. I use this for everything and you can do all kinds of repairs with it. You can do all kinds of crafts with it. If you're not sure how to use one, get on YouTube. Um, every time I always tell people that if there's anything that you don't know how to do, just get on YouTube because somewhere at some point, at some time, in some place, somebody has done it and has posted a video about it. <laughs> you can literally learn anything on YouTube. So for this, I'm going to use, I'm not even sure what size this is. I want to say it's, oh, there it is. It's a one third, one dash, one slash three. That's what size bit this is. And I am going to drill a hole in our little clothes pin here. See where this hole is? That's where I'm going to put this hole. I'm going to try to center it. Sometimes this slips and um, so it's, you know, you have to kind of watch it. So hold it back here. Don't hold it up here. Um, practice safety, guys. Safety, safety. And I'm going to have to tilt this a little bit so I can see, but you just want to kind of aim it. And I usually just kind of give it a couple little starts to kind of get a little place started and then just go for it. Or rip it out. It didn't feel like it was in there good. And then I kind of go, I kind of widen the hole a little bit. It will make it a little easier for you if you do this. I just kind of go around and make it just a tad wider. Um, but that's really, that's all you need is just that right there. Okay. And so we'll do another one, just so you can kind of see. I'm going to start it. See what I mean? It'll slip. If you don't get it exact, it's okay. All right. That'll work. Okay. Now, Let's get our sawdust out the way. We don't have to drill a hole in these. They're too small. We're not going to bother with that. What we do want to do, though, is tint these now. So we're going to set that down where it's not going to turn on. And what I've got for this step is I've got two paint brushes, small flat paint brushes. And I have two colors of... Tattered Angels Color Wash Tint. You get this at Hobby Lobby, um, and these last forever. Um, it doesn't take a whole lot of tint. You can see that it's metallic, so you have to really shake these up good before using them. These you find on the same aisle that they have the Minwax, um, the Furniture Stain, the um, folk art paint, you know, the craft paints and all that. That's where you find this. This is on that same aisle. Um, so that's where you get this. They're in little bottles like this. And um, these are fantastic. I love these. Now, I've already got some poured in here, but it's probably... It might be enough to do one or two, but I'm just going to... It'll keep in this little box. And I've kind of made a mess with it. This will come off, by the way. It's water-based, so don't worry if you get it everywhere, which I did. I got it everywhere. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to paint this one green. This will wash off, so don't worry if you get it on you. It will come off. I like using water-based things because it's easier to clean up. I don't want to have to use, you know, paint thinner and stuff like that. 
It's just easier to be messy if you know you can clean it up with water. If you don't like the color, if you think it's too dark, you can thin it down with water. I'm going to get those out of the way so I don't turn them green because I don't want them to be green. See the metallics in that? That's really pretty. I like that. It looks really neat when these get dry. See how the tint just washes on? It's a wash. So you don't have to be as, you know, careful with it and as thorough with it as you do paint. You know, because it's not going to look streaky or anything. It's just really easy to get in here and do this. Plus, it's got the metallic properties to it, so you can see it's shiny. It just, you know, it's really pretty. Okay, so there's one. We'll do another one real quick. We'll do this one, too. You can stain any of your wood crafty projects with this. You can use it in mixed media projects. So this is really cool, you know, mixed with, you know, used in combination with rather, you know, acrylics. And it would also be good to use with watercolor because watercolor is water-based. So this would be really pretty to paint with, I would think, if you were doing watercolor and you wanted something a little darker and more metallic, less transparent, this would be really pretty to add, especially if you were painting leaves. This is the perfect rose, rose leaf color, which is kind of why I decided to use it. Okay, and there is our second green clothespin. Now we're done with the green for now. So I'm going to put our lid back on this. I've got an extra towel over here because I always make a big mess. And now I'm going to use the brown tint. This is the bronze rather. I'm going to mix it up. It's bronze. I'm going to use that on these little clothes pins just mainly so I can show you the difference in the colors and what it looks like and how you can achieve different effects. You can see, I don't know if you can see the met metallic in that, but it is metallic. And you see it doesn't go on nearly as dark as what it looks like in the tub. And it's got that pretty sheen to it. So if you prefer this color, you can use it for your big flower too. It's just really whatever you want. You know, and if your color scheme is blue, they have all different colors of this. You know, so if you want to make blue flowers or if you want to make yellow flowers, you. You know, you just do whatever colors you want because they have a color that you will like. There's even a really pretty blue patina. I've got some of that in the cabinet over there. It's, it's real pretty. Kind of a turquoise blue with some copper in it. It's nice. Like it. Okay. And there's one of our little bronze colored clothes pins. I'll do one more for grins and giggles. Quick and easy. And this dries really quick too, guys. So, you know, it's going to dry a lot faster than paint. So you can get this project done really quickly. It 
it's going to seem like it's a lot, but it's really not. It's not a lot. There's, a, there's quite a few things that we're working with here, but it's really easy. Okay. And we'll add a little bit to it. So you can kind of see each one turns out a little different, but they're really pretty, you know, and you're going to pay more for tinted ones than you are for these. I mean, you, these look like the expensive ones that you can buy at the hobby stores, but really you've only spent a couple of dollars on this, you know, two or three dollars on this. And this is like, I've used a lot of this and you can see how little it took to do these. Okay. So you can see how long this is going to last. And then these you get at the Dollar Tree. So you can see, you can make a lot of these, a ton of these things for not very much money at all. Which is kind of cool. That's what I like. All right. Now we're going to go ahead and set these aside. And now we're going to do, now we're going to make a big mess. <laughs> we're only going to do one of these. Because that's what I have prepared is just one. Because I've got other ones made over here. So I can show you how to put these together. But what we're going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and take the leaf off. Because we're not going to be messing with that right now. And I'm going to get out the glitter. Oh, yay. We're going to do glitter. Glitter, glitter, glitter. What I do is I dump it in this bowl. So that I have enough. I always have glitter in this bowl. I put saran wrap over the top of it so it doesn't spill out when I'm not using it. But that's my gold glitter bowl. And this is my triple thick bowl. And I'm just going to put some triple thick in here. Don't need a lot. Just a little bit. And I'm going to wipe this brush off really good. Because I don't really want to turn my triple thick green. And I forgot to get water, so... <laughs> There's always something I'm forgetting. If it turns it a little green, oh well. Yours won't be green if you remember to rinse your brush out. <laughs> so what we're going to do now is we're going to take a big old... Here, let me show you. We're going to take a glob of this triple thick. We're just going to use a lot, okay? Lots. And we're going to put it on here. See the lip of that? That's all we're going to put it on. If it runs, that's fine. But this is where we want it to go. We want that to be thick on the edges of our petals. Okay. See that little lip? We're just going to put it right on there and just let it drip. you don't have to use gold glitter if you don't want to use gold that's what I'm using you can use any color that you want you can use clear you can use glitter glass if you want to I didn't want clear I wanted gold so that's what I'm using but you know you do you with your colors and your project and you make it look however you want you know burgundy glitter would be really pretty with this like a berry colored glitter it would be so pretty. I don't have any, but it would be pretty. You could use pink glitter, whatever you want. Okay, so you see, we just went on the edges of the petals. I missed this one, I think. Let's go ahead and get some on there. All right, I'm gonna put my lid on this. And guess what we're going to do now? <laughs> we're going to dump this in here. Yes. We're going to mush that down in there. Now you can see why it's good to have a round bowl. All right. And see, that's pretty. Now I might want to put a little more glitter on that. So let's open the triple thick back up. I'm going to try not to get glitter in the triple thick, but I did yesterday, so it's not going to really hurt it. 
But I do want more around that petal since it's sticking out a little bit. Might as well just glitterify it. Okay. Now see, wasn't that easy? Super easy. And you can use a bigger bowl if you want to. This is just the bowl that I have. And that is gorgeous. We're going to need to set this aside and let it dry before we do our next project. So just put it back in your little vase. Um, I'm sorry, before you take the next step in our project. So just put that back in your vase, go rinse your brushes out, um, and get ready for the next thing that we're going to do. Okay, and I will see you guys in a few minutes. Well, maybe tomorrow. <laughs> we'll see how long it takes it to dry. All right, guys, I'll be back. Alrighty, let's wrap this up. So you can see, hopefully, on these little clothespins how pretty they are with the metallic um, sheen. I just love it. And so what I did off camera is I took these little red mulberries and I turned the stem, you know, down just to about right here. You don't want to trim it all the way off so that the leaf doesn't take a chance of falling off. And then I dipped it. I put triple thick on the on the edges of the petals, just like I did the large flowers. And then I dipped it in the gold glitter. I did two of those, and they came out like this. They're really pretty. I like the red. And so, um, yeah. So that's what we're going to do now is for these. These are just really simple. We're just going to glue these on to the clothespins. And for that, I am going to use some E6000 because that's going to hold it on there permanently. Oh, I got too much. And I'm also going to put like a little dot of hot glue right in the middle just to hold it in place until the E6000 sets. And I'm just going to stick it on there just like so. You can kind of clear off anything that's running into the edge, although nobody's really going to see the bottom side of it. But that's, that's it, guys. Isn't that cute? That is just so cute. I love it. We'll do the other one real quick. Just such an easy project with beautiful results. The kind of project that I like. Plus it's fun to fill your tree with handmade ornaments, things that you know that you've done. And before I forget to mention this, um, because these are paper, you know, and the, and the nature of gluing and all, and you've got glitter on these, if you will save those little silica gel packets that you get like in a box of shoes or with a new purse or lots of other things, those little, I don't, I don't know if you can buy them or not. I haven't searched those out on Amazon, but I bet you can. Those little silica gel packets. Save those when you get them. And then just put a few of those in with your Christmas ornaments, wrap these up in some tissue paper and put them in a box with some of those silica gel packets and that will keep these nice. Um, that will keep any moisture from causing these um, to discolor or anything like that. So keep those little gel packets and store your ornaments, your handmade ornaments with those and it'll keep them really nice. Okay, and so these two are done. We're just gonna wait for those to set up. Aren't those pretty? I love them. Okay, now on to our big ones. So what we're gonna do for these is we're gonna take the leaf off. I'm gonna do a couple so you'll see. And see this little plastic thing here? You don't want that on there because that's going to raise it up too high. So we're just gonna take that off and, and discard that. And then the next thing we want to do is we're gonna trim this down First, we're going to take this off because this is kind of thick. So what I'm going to do is just cut like at an angle. I hope you can see. I'm just going to cut like at an angle. My little cutters are getting dull. But I'm just going to trim some of that off. I still want my hole because I am going to stick my stem back in here.
And I'm gonna trim the stem to about, I'm gonna trim it short to about right there. You do want just a little bit of it because that's gonna help you poke it into the um, clothespin. And so then I'm going to take my leave, shiny side up, you know, you want you don't want to put it on backwards, so make sure. And then I'm going to put a couple of dots, a little circle dot, whatever, onto my flower. And then I'm just going to glue my leaf down to the flower like so. Okay. And all right. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to put E6000 on here onto the stem itself. And around the base of it. You don't want too much on the stem, but you do need a little bit. We're not going to hot glue just yet. We're going to do the just the E6000 first. And then we're going to poke this down inside the hole and just give it a good shove. Just like that. We may not need to hot glue it because when that dries, that is going to hold. That's going to be on there forever and ever. Now, if this is sticking out too far, you can always trim that off, but it's going to be fine. That's actually that's actually perfect. You want it to you want it to go through there all the way so that it will hold. And I might just put a little dot of hot glue in here, just for good measure. A little on both sides, just to hold it in place so it doesn't move. All right. And that's, that's all there is to it, guys. We'll do one more, just so you can kind of see again, because I've got one more ready. This one here is really pretty. And so again, we're just going to take the leaf off. We're going to remove the plastic. It just comes right off. Take the stem out. Trim the plastic at an angle, put your stem back in, trim it down really short, see where the longest part of this is and trim it down short, like to about right there. Hot glue around the base, messy, messy, put your leaf on. Shiny side up. Doesn't really matter which way it goes. Just get it on there. We're going to pick one of our clothespins. This one's got a little wider hole. I think I'm going to use that. And then we're going to put E6000 around and a little bit on the stem itself. that on my finger. Then we're going to poke it down into the clothespin all the way down. Okay. Give it a little dot of hot glue just to make sure that it holds while it sets. All right. Now we have three of these beauties. We've got more to do. So, I mean, a couple of these, you know, the, this is so easy and they're so beautiful. I mean, why not do these? And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to let these dry and I'll show you what they look like on the tree. Okay. Thanks for joining me today. I hope you like this easy project. I hope you think it's fun. I hope you give it a try. 
and I will see you guys for um, my next project.